Hello friends, this program on target with Captain Tabak and I am Captain Yuri Tabak. Uh, this program is created um, to point out people who are, in my opinion, are uh, heroes. Heroes in the sense that they've done something to help their country, to help their nation, to help their people, or just to help anyone and not being recognized. Uh, when they walk down the street, we don't know about them, but yet somebody makes songs about them, make movies about them, the politicians talk about them, but the benefits don't go to them. They go to the movie stars, to the producers, to the actors, and they get all the glory. Uh, but the price is paid by them. And today is uh, my friend. Uh, he is a dissident. He is a Belarusian uh, economist a businessman who uh, had to flee a dictatorial uh, President Lukashenko from Belarus, his uh, Lukashenko's uh, regime, and he is right now in Ukraine. And uh, uh, this is my friend, this is uh, Yaroslav Romanchuk. Yaroslav, thank you for coming and joining this program. It's my honor and pleasure to be your guest, uh, my captain. I, <laughs> I would say that. Thank you. Thank you. I like when people address me that way. It's like, I you know, that uh, wonderful it. movie, uh, Society of Dead Poets, uh, Dead Poet Society, right. where there was a cliche, this phrase, uh, oh, my captain. <laughs> about <laughs> well, the teacher. I like that. I like it. I miss that. I, <laughs> I miss that when people used to call me like that. But uh, seriously, uh, you're a true dissident, and you can't really go back to Belarus without, you know, fear for your life or for your safety. What is it that you did to upset President Lukashenko, who seems to be like a nice guy? Like, uh, you know, he... Like, you know, uh, a year ago, about 70% of Ukrainians believed that Lukashenko is the best international politician. That was the level of support much higher than Angela Merkel and anybody else in the world. So that was illusion created by propaganda and uh, lack of interest to what's going on in my country. Uh, I've been in uh, politics for over 25 years and I joined that after I was in business. And uh, essentially I was an active uh, economist a guy who wrote programs for the leading opposition the political party uh, and that party was in opposition to the young president Lukashenko and the things evolved and then in the second half of the 90s we have three uh, assassinations uh, of uh, top politicians that challenged Lukashenko the world ignored that mostly and essentially, the thing that we observed in Russia in 2029 happened in Belarus, began in Belarus back in 1996. So the authoritarian regime after the collapse of the Soviet Union was not like immediate. Mm -hmm. People had a kind of a, uh, some time to ponder, to uh, weigh different options. And Lukashenko was uh, somebody who uh, lured them by promises, by all good times, and he uh, reinstalled uh, authoritarian regime step by step. And uh, we had the last democratic elections back in 1996. And I was in opposition to him, to his regime, to his policy at that time. You, were, uh, you also were a candidate for president. Right. I uh, ran for parliament three times, uh, 2004. Uh, five and uh, eight in by-election 2005 and uh, then I ran for president 2010 and uh, then I was in opposition definitely pro providing a lot of uh, intellectual ammunition to the opposition creating different programs and challenging basically the model that he created his uh, ideal is a collective farm which is uh, managed governed by a benevolent czar or president uh, with no legislative power, no uh, rule of law, just, you know, notions that he is right always. And if you don't agree with him, beat it or just leave the country or you'll go to prison. That is why um, that's a, not a one time event. But in 2021, 2020, when we had this revolution of freedom and dignity, 
uh, definitely uh, uh, anybody uh, was involved in the events because that was so uh, obvious, so graphic. Uh, murders, uh, torture in prison, uh, well, lack of uh, respect to so. basic human rights, and everybody uh, protested against that. So uh, I was uh, probably too vocal to the regime to stand me inside the country, so I had a search, KGB search, and they uh, allegedly on the suspicion that uh, I was financing terrorism. And you know, if you consider number of people who the authorities call terrorists, and the uh, number of people living in the country, so Belarus now in the top five terrorist countries in the world. Mm. That's mm. about the definition of terrorism that Lukashenko regime applies. So, uh, let me get that straight. So, you being in opposition to collective farms, to torture, and to um, dictatorship of the same one person in one country forever, mm -hmm. somehow you think it's wrong. Uh, they think that it's dangerous for their stability, for the propaganda machine that has been in operation for 25 years. And the, the only wow. other source of information that Belarusians are exposed to is Russian television. And we can just compare the two propagandas, which is worse and which is more corrosive in terms of uh, influencing minds and reasoning. And so I can... So I can see why Lukashenko dislikes you. I mean, I can uh, I can appreciate that. But you know that I'm a constructive guy. I, I'm not a street fighter. I'm not a, a military guy. I have no idea how to use weapons. But what I know is how to create intellectual ammunition. And uh, in, back in 1991, I believe, there was a very big fundamental mistake uh, made by many, uh, both uh, Western experts and people who came to see what remnants of the Soviet Union. They uh, set the goal of uh, changing the economy instead of setting the goal of changing values and minds of the people, which is a different task. That is why uh, in order to change the economy, it required like a bunch of technocrats and people who do a lot of macroeconomic policies, but mostly uh, values and attitudes and description of what the West was, was ignored by most of the countries, especially in the West in Belarus, in Ukraine, and, and Russia. That is why now it's very difficult to understand why uh, we uh, came to the deadlock. Like Ukraine, Belarus has a totalitarian regime, Russia has a totalitarian regime, Ukraine is in the high hands of oligarchs. Many people believe that that's a result of liberalization and the Western values that do not fit the paradigm of uh, the Ukrainian culture, Russian or Belarusian culture. And that is wrong because uh, neither Ukraine nor Russia nor Belarus never lived a day under political, civic, and economic freedom. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I'm not the I'm not an economist, uh, but I do think that collective farms are not a good idea. <laughs> but uh, or or torture of people that are in opposition of you, but. We kind of jumped right away into politics and economics, but I wanted to know a little bit more about you as an individual. Um, you're not ethnically Belarusian, though. Ethnically, I'm a Pole. Uh, my parents were born in Poland before 1939, before the re-emergence or uh, seizure of that part of the world by Soviets. And, uh, you know, the western part of Belarus, western part of Ukraine, were uh, victims of uh, Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact back in 1939, and we know, knew little about that because that was a prohibited topic at high school level, all levels of Soviet-style education. But uh, my uh, native language is Polish. I was definitely uh, raised by the Catholic family, people who believed in God, who went to church, which was prohibited. My mother was offered an option to get a job promotion if she denied her Polish uh, ethnic belonging, which was part of the uh, passport, like fifth grad. Right, right. Oh, I Jews know. I'm very, and, yeah, very Jews and Poles right. were in the same category. Very and, uh, and or And stop going to church or uh, declare atheism as an official like, uh, value basis. She refused both, and that is why she stayed in the little town at the border with Poland. And uh, I was raised in this kind of culture. The I was lucky not to be indoctrinated by Soviet 
television because we did not have good uh, signal, which was very bad. And but the stronger signal was from the Polish television, Polish. which wasn't that free. But at the same time, it was like relatively. Uh, pluralistic in many ways, and we had a chance to listen to rock music. We listened to Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, and uh, BBC World, and that was a kind of, uh, for me, part of the educational uh, environment where I was brought up. So let me ask you this. Um, I grew up in the United States. I went to school in the United States. I went to university in the United States. I served in the military in the United States. Uh, I'm an American. And uh, uh, my thought process is, uh, is of an American individual. And I, but I'm always suspicious of Soviets who grew up in the Soviet Union, never lived anywhere in the West, in an English-speaking country. And somehow they speak English better than I do. <laughs> the reason is very simple. I love the language and I graduated from Linguistic University in Minsk. And I was in the top 10 of the best uh, students in the Soviet Union in terms of uh, the English language proficiency. We have Olympic Games dedicated to the English language, which was like Soviet Union uh, competition. And so I was part of the, that team uh, of my university, and we dedicated much time to talking, to movie, to listening, to grammar, all kinds of uh, linguistic activities. And since that time, I always read a lot and listened to rock music, which inspired my love to the language in the first place. And uh, after that, I uh, uh, spent uh, many, many summers in summer uh, philosophical economic schools dedicated to studying, exploring objectivism or philosophy and rant. And that is a long lasting love affair with ideas of phil philosophy of liberty which again, uh, if you explore literature, that's one thing. You, Dreiser, Shakespeare, all good guy, great, good, dead guys at the same time. Uh, I was lucky to meet uh, uh, a couple from Alabama, uh, Forrester, Charles and Susanna Tomlinson, and they sent me a thick book, Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. And I was an inquiring mind in the breakup of the Soviet Union, so I wanted to explore, understand the West, which I idealized in many ways. And uh, when I read that, that was like a, like a thunderstorm for me in my head. I wanted to explore and to learn more because that was something that was contrary to what I was taught at school, at university, everywhere that capitalism is good, that business is benevolent, that entrepreneurship is uh, unique, and uh, that is the source of progress. So I had to understand it, and uh, that was the time when just making money was too boring to, for me. I switched on to intellectual career. I would join the first think tank in Belarus. And after that, I uh, joined Libertarian uh, International Organization. Libertarian. Which which exposed me to a broader spectrum of issues about uh, so metaphysics. You're a, so you're a dirty capitalist. Uh, I am ideologue and proponent, advocate of uh, capitalism as the most noble, efficient, and humane society in the world. So well, if, you're a cap if you're this kind of a dirty capitalist, that would put you in a category of being a tr Trumpist, the, the worst of the capitalism. And you're anti-socialism, you're anti-collective uh, uh, farming, which means, in the minds of many people, that will make you pro-Putin, pro-Lukashenko. Pro, pro you know what, uh, when I explored and met a lot of Americans, I saw that had, they had no idea about the way socialism functioned. They have no idea what socialism is. So there are many different polls that describe that like 25% of Americans are Britain. There was a recent poll. They confuse socialism for capitalism, vice versa. They have no idea what it is. That's about the quality of education in high school level, university level, that people have no idea what, what these fundamental sure, uh, notions are. Sure, they all scheme. All the professors scheme. Let's That's be right. fair. So when Let I, us all good people, nice when, people get together and when, kill all the mean people. People right. are driven by good intentions. And uh, as a scholar, I understand that, you know, if you uh, try to explore and understand the essence of different uh, concepts and notions and things that exist in the world, 
go and learn and see how it re works in the real life. And I know how it works in the Soviet Union. I know how it works in like a modern dictatorship. So I warn them that if you want to uh, defend freedom as the biggest and the most valuable asset you guys have in the West, explore how enemies operate in order to discredit you guys, how to, to uh, wage information warfare, to uh, pervert facts. It would be too difficult no, for no, no, our it's universities. A, but if you, like, if for our universities, it's much easier for a professor to come out, to which I agree, and to say, I think that all the nice people should get together and kill all the mean people. Gary, but one, one of the fundamental flaws you guys have... What you're saying is too complicated. You know, but you, one of the fundamental flaws you guys have is that you always see uh, different di discussions about capitalism, socialism, but when you try to see and uh, find a definition of capitalism, which would uh, meet the requirements for a scientific term, you find it next to impossible. So I define capitalism as a decentralized system of decision making by private owners within their property rights in a system of division of labor. So essentially, this is something which is missing the whole thing. You, uh, I don't think they teach that in our universities. Uh, well, if I was invited, I would definitely go and teach Americans how to defend America because one of the few things that uh, you Americans in general should be taught is their own history. Like you have robber barons and you call, I mean, not you, but uh, most Americans, no Americans yeah, call sure. robber barons, not this, the people who were robber barons, but noblest, the biggest uh, creators of American wealth and prosperity and civilization. So you, you, they you were nice people. So they were very nice in terms of maybe they're the, the I don't know how nice they were. They were, but not they very created nice. wealth. But they they created moved wealth. civilization. Sure. They were very important in building communities. But we all want to be nice. We don't, we don't want to be. They were mean people. You know, they were like Trump, mean like. Okay, like uh, you know, like Reagan, they were mean people. But again, know, we, were, we, we want to be, we want nice. Gary, people, but one, like, one more thing that's about the, the America. It back in uh, twelve years ago, in two thousand seven and eight, I saw one of the biggest uh, self destruction efforts of the United States government when uh, they destroyed the fundamentals of capitalism by nationalizing uh, commercial structure that were guilty of <laughs> mismanagement and uh, inefficient relocation says. of banks, uh, General Motors, insurance companies. Essentially, the, uh, there is a profit and loss mechanism which is very fair and it judges everybody based on merit and uh, the service to no, community. It's like they, to they said, give our mortgages to everybody, right. everybody but should if, have a house, uh, if some then the banks could do it, then they bail out the and banks. Screwed, uh, and and did not deliver. And instead of uh, going bankrupt, they were saved by consumer, by sure. taxpayers' money and fake money that was printed by Federal Reserve. That was, uh, again, the erosion of capitalism as we know it from the classical description. Likewise, so, that is why it's so easy to uh, target American and uh, European Union right now because of the fact of the these little and big uh, faults and uh, erosions that are uh, you are self-imposed, right? And but let me get back to 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 Belarus and you, because we'll talk about the United States because you you getting me all um, <laughs> excited uh, excited about the United States and I'm gonna flip out in a minute, and I need to get this program going. So, do you think Belarus and uh, Lukashenko, President Lukashenko, is independent, or are they completely engulfed by? by the Russians and by Putin. Lukashenko has never been independent. Uh, he has been independent even for one day because he was elected with the assistance from Russia and he depended on Russia as a source of revenues, political support, information support. He had a plan to become uh, president of United Russia and Belarus. And uh, if uh, Putin, uh, not Putin, but if Yeltsin beha had behaved differently, he probably would have become that president. But history uh, judged differently, and uh, Putin was the guy who uh, broke his plans to become that kind of president. Right now, Putin wants to be president of the United States, United Union of Russia and Belarus. And the way that uh, Lukashenko 
performed his economic policy and social policy is that he depends on Russia on, uh, on energy resources, on market for the industrial goods, on um, uh, the, uh, the market for agricultural goods. So definitely there is no uh, independence whatsoever. But right now, after the forged uh, so-called elections, the dependence is much bigger. And right now, there is no leverage that Lukashenko can use in uh, the dialogue with, the Put with Putin and the Kremlin. And that makes the whole situation much more vulnerable, especially when we see the re sanction regime imposed by European Union and the United States saying that sanctions work. But uh, there are like a lot of declarations about sanctions. Sanctions can make things worse and can facilitate and accelerate the, uh, the merger between Belarus and Russia, so jeopardizing the independence of Belarus and uh, jeopardizing Ukraine, which borders uh, yeah, Belarus. Yeah, it's a, what we call a two-edge uh, sword. Uh, yeah. But, um, yes, but... Uh, uh, let me ask you this, then, um, you know, that Putin, I think, as our friend Andrei Ilarionov stated that Putin actually wanted to be the president of United Belarus and Russia, uh, uh, Russia and, and Ukraine. Ukraine. And with Ukraine, it's not working out very well because Ukrainians, uh, for some unknown reason to me, do not want to be Russians. <laughs> but <laughs> it's obvious reasons. Go figure that one out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but. Your English is just, uh, I mean, I can't uh, even comprehend how well you know English and uh, can express yourself in it and, and relay your ideas. Do you, and I've read some of your works in Russian, in Russian language, I, and, I'm not, and I'm not an economist, <laughs> and I, uh, so I didn't understand much except that collective farm is not good, capitalism <laughs> is, good. is good, you know, socialism <laughs> is not good. Cap but do you write... I know you write in English yeah. as well. Yeah. Sure. Our English speaking friends who are watching it right now, where can they find your publications in English? I have some uh, video presentations in English, made some presentations in English, uh, lectures, and uh, I gave All some All they can interviews. do is like in YouTube. Yeah, just YouTube, uh, just, Yaroslav Romanchuk, yeah. they find them. If they cannot, I can really uh, send them links. Uh, I have some. Uh, bigger pieces of work. Do you get in invited English. to the uh, to the Western universities? Sometimes I am invited. Lecture. I uh, lectured at some universities. I, what I did for many, many years, 15 years, I cooperate with uh, SIPE, which is Center for International Private Enterprise, and we promoted entrepreneurship, as, uh, which is very important and very valuable asset. Let me uh, state one thing, which many people in the West don't get. For the last 30 years, the institutions of democracy were under very, very heavy attack from propaganda people, KGB, uh, oligarchs, you name it. People uh, who uh, entered democracy processes in 1991, they believe that they live in democracy right now, and democracy is uh, the reason why they have uh, poverty, inequality, injustice, uh, oligarchs, you name it. All bad things, including uh, prostitution, drug addiction, and everything. Right now, but there is one thing which is fundamentally different in American culture from what we, what we have here, which is entrepreneurship culture. And, it's, and I think in, at this particular time, after 30 years of walking around, the beating about the bush on democracy building, the best uh, area where you can explore and concentrate efforts is entrepreneurship, which is unique. America is number one here, no doubt about it. You have a long history of how people excelled and succeeded in uh, the harshest possible conditions. And if you concentrate efforts on how to, uh, what money is, what entrepreneurship is, how to uh, build a modern production, how to cooperate, what division of labor is, what profit is. These are all things that are not understood by the people here. But what you can do, you can be missionary of freedom, not through ideas of democracy and institutions that are very sophisticated and very subtle for many people to decide because people like in Russia right now, in Belarus, Ukraine, oh, we go, we have ballot papers, we put them in the ballot boxes, uh, votes are counted. So what's wrong with our democracy? 
they do not understand same how the whole thing, thing is manipulated. Yeah. Right. Same thing with in America. Exactly. Lately. Well, it's uh, you're, you're just entering that particular uh, part of the world of, of the processes. But when it, when it gets down to business, this is where you are a master of the world. And definitely you should put it on the forefront of the fight against totalitarianism and collective farm mentality. Because that's about mentality. So for, I said, a uh, culture of hard work, irresponsibility, uh, innovate, innovation, instead of culture of freeloading, uh, rudeness, and uh, some entitlements. So that's why you, when Soviet Union collapsed, it was toxic remnants of the Soviet Union fell on the uh, soil of European Union and America, and, and you were poisoned by that. Because right now, when you look at the budget number, uh, budget size of America, which is about like up to $10 trillion, and so over 40% of GDP, oh gosh, that's, that's, that's very close to socialism. So when you just fathom the idea that America turned socialist without using the name, that shocks very many people. And that is why when you have the West, which is shooting itself in the head, it's much more easier for dictators, authoritarian leaders like China, like uh, Russia, like Kazakhstan, like Belarus, to counterattack, to go on saying uh, about the protection of so-called uh, conservative values, like family, one thing right, uh, uh, gender issues, ecology, you name it. Well, I can that tell you what, with, the, with such uh, ideas of yours, you're not going to be invited to Berkeley <laughs> or Columbia. I can imagine the professors are sitting there saying, oh my God, who invited this economist here? Oh my, he's a cap capitalist. But that's about he's the thing. He's a dirty you're, capitalist. You're, we're, we're, trying to, to, we're trying to be fair and just and social justice to everyone. And you're propagating... Uh, I'm oh saying what God. I see. It's like f scholars must analyze not fathoms concepts so like space rockets, objects that they have no idea about. They should analyze human beings. Human being is an acting individual. Homo agens, as a uh, famous uh, economist Ludwig well, von Mises said, not homo the, economy. Right. Economic if you economics. look at our uh, socialist uh, Bolshevik uh, uh, representatives in our Congress, they're all dressed in the most expensive uh, <laughs> shoes yeah, and then watches and just like uh, the you know, in Russian exactly. and the Belarus, uh, they're all, the, the, for themselves, they want the best and the most but expensive. But what surprised me, like two years ago, I was in New York uh, making presentation at the Freedom Dinner and the Freedom uh, Liberty Forum, and uh, I asked the participants about the definition of capitalism. And they were, it was difficult for them to understand it and to give the definition immediately and that is what we should we freedom fighters in the whole world saviors of western civilization should explore and be very clear about if you do not understand that's why you have state capitalism you have oligarchic capitalism you have ravaging capitalism and all sorts of things dedicated stick to the most noble and most progressive system in the world that is why it's like uh, people are, you know. Do you uh, uh, let me ask you? Uh, President Lukashenko once asked you if you have a million dollars. Yeah, it's uh, he asked you, me because do you have a million dollars. <laughs> you must be kidding me! I wish I had one million dollars. So you're not a very good capitalist. Uh, he uh, referred to to economist. He believes that an economist, economist should have should have a good economist is always somebody who has at least one million dollars. At least so he believes that. Uh, and that's also a common uh, misunderstanding of the profession of economist. So people who write about money and people who are make money are two different categories of well, people. It's, it's <laughs> a lot of people would say about military people. How many people have you killed? If you didn't kill yeah, anyone, yes. then you're not what a very kind good of military guy. You are a very good military right? guy, right? <laughs> if you killed a million people, then you're a very good general. But that's right? uh, that's a very bad uh, policy that refers to many countries, including that part of the world, even to Ukraine. You see many people in Ukrainian government who were probably good businessmen, but they have no idea what economic science is all about. And that makes them very vulnerable to these uh, erosive, uh, very corrosive ideas from the West, Western socialist universities. You wrote a few pieces that I, I read, which were not exactly about economy, but uh, probably more about human nature. 
and it was what we say in Russian is like you, your soul was screaming, screaming at people, <laughs> wake up, you know. And one of them was uh, called Highway to Hell, and God is in shock. And another one was uh, uh, Universal uh, Justice at Davos, uh, and uh, the world is uh, the world that we live in. What were you trying to? to relay there what were you trying to tell the people what's going on what is going on in my country right now what is going on in the united states because the united states will radiate to everyone else we're the ones that unfortunately unfortunately for now we're the ones that set the pace and set the example in those works of yours what were you trying to say i'm trying to uh describe the intellectual trends of the world and see what intellectual centers, what organizations set that gender. The gender is set by the guys, by the people, organizations who, who are very, very far from real life. When UN, United Nations, talk about sustainable... Do you know what UN stands for? Uh, United Nations? No, no it says useless nobodies. <laughs> but that useless nobodies, right? They set the agenda as in the form of sustainable development. Everybody has uh, 17 sustainable development indicators and that's like a lot of wishful thinking it's like marx uh, talked about classless society freedom and we had a lot of uh, descriptions of uh communist anarchists that describe the world that they would love to live in wherever no property Utopia. imagine there's no heaven blah blah right. blah like john lennon uh, famous communist singer right. and uh Davos right now is the center that works out and defines a gender for the destruction of capitalism. It wants to destroy private property, it wants to destroy freedom, it wants to destroy the fundamentals of the Western civilization. And, and the paradox of the situation is that it is all done by uh, the people who are uh, like... Exa examples. Is it, is it like a world conspiracy kind it's, of it's, it's not about conspiracy, but if you look at uh, Klaus Schwab, look at these people who have got together like three, five thousand people, richest, most powerful politicians, NGOs who are part of that gang, and they believe that they are like a collective uh, John Man and Keynes. The reason I call this collective John Man and Keynes because Keynes was an aristocrat. He believed that he can save the world, save the capitalism and the world from socialism by uh, centralizing some powers. Right now, uh, uh, policymakers and politicians, both in the United States, European Union, and the West, they made so many mistakes in monetary policy and fiscal policy. They turned their countries into leviathans that uh, these monsters are devouring societies and economies. And there's a savior, like a missionary uh, from Davos says, guys, let's centralize things even more. Let's set up centralized government. Let's set world minister of finance. Let's get rid of banned cash because we should control everybody for the sake of everybody. So security is put on the uh, top and privacy and freedom is ignored. And that is one of the probably the most dangerous tendency in the modern world. And many people say, well, do we know, do we, do we want this kind of future? Do, hadn't, hadn't, haven't we seen this kind of attitude in the Soviet Before. Union without property, without freedom, with all like so, surveillance? So President Trump became a problem for them, for Dallas. Uh, Trump, anybody who tells the truth and uh, defends uh, fundamental classical foundations of capitalism and free society is a dangerous guy. Well, from, for us, like, who am I to challenge Davos? I am uh, somebody from Belarus dissident who have some ideas and that's it. Uh, anybody who, Russia, Ukraine, we are not, unfortunately, in the mainstream of uh, intellectual uh, revolutionary ideas. But the Western, civilization, Western universities, Ivy League universities, you, you had uh, Sorbonne, you have London School of Economics, you have Berlin, you have Italian universities. All these guys generate uh, ammunition for destroyers of the West, but, which is very, very dangerous. But let me ask you this. This is how, I, and I'm not an intellectual, I'm not a journalist. I'm, a, I'm actually a very simple-minded individual. 
Uh, and I'm not asking for compliments. I really, truly believe that, and I know that. But I do see some parallels. I see that those universities were like universities in Russia in, uh, in 1915, 1914, leading up to 1917. It was the, the it was the uh, journalists. It was the students who were protesting, Antifa, yep. Black yep. Lives Matter. It was uh, them that were out in the streets saying capitalism needs to be destroyed, Tsar has to be killed, yep. and uh, uh, proletariat should be in charge. So I see the similarities right there. Do you see that similarity? And later on, uh, who the enemy number one? The gendarmeria, the gendarmes are the name. We have to get rid Four of- Four structures. We have to right. get rid of them. They're the enemy. They're the ones that abuse people, shoot them. So let's get, defund the police. Defund the police, right. And then let's lose a war. <laughs> Another and, one. <laughs> right, do you see the similar? And then after we lose the war, let's talk to the people we lost to. Let's talk to the Germans or to Taliban or to the Chinese. Let's call them up and try. Let's call up Russia. And that way, let's get rid of officers in the military. Let's break down our military. And then the Bolsheviks take power. Dissolve the army. That's it. <laughs> dissolve the, then Bolsheviks take power and they never let it go. They never let it go. Do you see the similarities of 1917, Russia and the United States now? I would call them ominous parallels. Uh, things that, uh, the events and uh, trends that were in Russia, in the Soviet Union in the 50s, 60s, and the trends in the West in 2020s, which is very, very disturbing because uh, intellectual, the only revolution that is long lasting is the revolution of ideas. And the West seems to ignore the battle of ideas many, many years. For about 50 years, universities were the centers of educating, brainwashing, and uh, uh, the centers of uh, intellectual heresy uh, in terms of collectivism, philosophy of uh, masses, and stuff like that. That is why you uh, people in America, they did not understand for many, many generations, Two, three generations. They were not ta taught the truth about entrepreneurship, about profit and uh, loss mechanisms, about freedom. So they thought that we, they took it for granted. And as a result, but in ideologues and uh, enemies of the West, of the Western civilization, they were not sleeping. You know, they were very active, uh, acting from inside. That's why woke culture, cancel culture. Uh, Antifa culture, all these collectivisms, all these things that uh, uh, fight individualism. These are all embodiments of uh, collective culture, collective uh, propaganda uh, f generated by the enemies of the West, by the enemies of what I call statism or interventionism in general. That is why there is a ongoing battle between like Batman and a Joker, right? And this time Batman is losing so far. Because we have the Joker that is uh, having an upper hand. Uh, he controls and erodes the trust to money. He controls and erodes trust to uh, governments, uh, to media. the institutions of uh, law enforcement, media, to private yeah, property, sure. to media. That is why if uh, good people of not only one city, but uh, from worldwide international community don't get together and work out the resistance program and uh, come back with vengeance, then jokers from all over the world would prevail and that will be the end of our civilization. Not a happy, uh, no, but okay, well. <laughs> Let's move to a happier note. <laughs> let me ask you this. What th this program, uh, our American friends or English speaking friends are watching, what do you want to tell the Americans? Well, if you wanted to say it in two sentences, something for Americans to remember, what would you like to tell them? Start thinking or rethink what you know about America. Rediscover America as uh, we know it here because we admired America for freedom, for brevity, for entrepreneurship, for something that the whole world aspired to be, to become. And if you shoot yourself in the head and heads and hands, don't uh, expect the world to reinvent itself. You, the salvation of the world definitely would come from America. But to do that, every thinking individual should turn into a little 
networking mass media that would challenge uh, status and collectivist mass media that uh, poison people, people's mind all over the world. So go on for intellectual revolution of ideas. I just want to point out that I ask that question of all of my friends that come and join me at this program, uh, but it's all Muslim uh, Russian speakers, but they all say this. I ask them all, what would you <laughs> like the Americans to hear? And they all say pretty much the same. So it's not just this one individual. Yaroslav, uh, I want to tell you that uh, I've already given you the $2 yeah, right, I bill got it. with our uh, I Don't put that in the bank because that will be useless. Right. <laughs> well, no, but it's not useless. It's supposed to bring you luck. And it exactly. has a picture there of our uh, where we signed the uh, Declaration of Independence at Independence Hall at my hometown of Philadelphia. And freedom is not free. And you no. certainly have paid a huge price for it and you continue to pay for it and you continue to struggle and you continue to stay in the fight. You're not disengaging. Very proud of to know you. It's an honor. And you're not only a heroic guy because you stood up to a dictator like Lukashenko in Belarus and to Russian Putin and now in Ukraine and you're trying to promote. Now you're actually standing up to a huge US machine that is not happy with people who are pro-Trump or pro-capitalism. So you're facing a lot of danger in that sense. But so you're not my hero just for that. You're also my hero because how old are you? 55. You're 55. And how many pull-ups do you do every day? I've got 44 chin-ups and pull-ups. 44 chin-ups. It's uh, pull-ups is like hundreds and uh, that doesn't count for me. <laughs> 55, 44 chin-ups. And that's very heroic. Anyway, Thank you. Slava Ukraini. Jeroen Slava, Belarus.